You rely on technology daily to connect, communicate, and serve up information in your business. The last things you need are IT disruptions which lead to downtime, lost revenue, and stress. At TeamLogic IT, we provide comprehensive services to manage your information technology. For information, go to www.lafayettecomputer.com. Hi, welcome to the Gunner's Vault. A lot of people will tell you, don't try this at home. Me? I'm going to tell you, as long as you're illegal and not stupid, yeah, try it at home. Okay kids, today we got a real treat. We don't see them very often in here, but when we do, we want to take advantage of it. And we're going to do that today. Check this out. M2HB 50 caliber machine gun. Designed by John Moses Browning, who is pretty much a genius. He designed all kinds of crap. 1911, 1919, this, the bar, you name it. He's got his hands all over stuff. Now check it out. This is the longest serving machine gun in history in any nation. The MG42 is close, you know, the clones of MG3s and stuff like that. But the M2 is basically unchanged since its inception, well, its design of uh, 1918. There are some changes, of course, since then. But since it's entered service, there's not a lot of difference. All right, now let me uh, backtrack a little bit. 50 cal HP. HP stands for heavy barrel. Why? Because this barrel is friggin' heavy. I mean, it weighs a damn ton. Ordinarily, I take guns apart, show you the workings of them. I'm not going to do that today because, frankly, I don't want to lift the barrel. It's a damn heavy thing. But what I am going to do is go through a little bit of the workings on the inside. So that's cool. Uh, one other thing, it fires a 50 cal or a 50 BMG round. You might think, oh, BMG stands for big machine gun. You know, you'd be right, but you'd be wrong at the same time actually stands for Browning Machine Gun. So he's got his name on the round and the gun. They designed the gun specifically to shoot the 50 caliber round. They, want, they had a uh, limitation in, in effect. Basically they wanted a 50 cal round and they wanted a certain velocity uh, in the neighborhood of uh, 2700 feet per second I believe it was what it was. And the reason they wanted that is to shoot armor. You know, it's World War I, armor's thin, 50 cal, go right through it. However, it came out after World War I, so they never had a chance to really pop any tops on stuff. All right, so check it out. Uh, let's listen to this. Y'all are going to like this. That's satisfying. That's awesome. That's it. Let's try it again, because I really like that. I, I missed the hell out of this gun. Yeah. So what I used to fire was actually the XM218, which is the aircraft version of this. Uh, from here to here, same gun. There's really no differences, except for the oil buffer, and we're not going to go into that. Uh, what it is, the main difference is it had a lighter barrel, barrel jacket, different trunnion, lighter trunnion. This gun is actually heavier than the XM218 or the GAL, oh God, the GAL18 by, uh, I think about 20 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that. Rate of fire on the M2HB is about 650, 700. On the XM218 or GAO18, it's about, it's closer to a thousand. You can tweak it up to a thousand, but it's actually about seven to eight, give or take, you know. Uh, fires the same round. One thing uh, we used to fly around with and shoot a lot API, APIT. This is actually armor piercing incendiary tracer. You can tell because of the silver and red tip. We also have some other stuff. We have uh, black tip. Black tip, what is it? What is it? What is it? If you ever seen a 30 odd six, you know what this is. Armor piercing, that's right. One other thing by the 30 odd 6, this was basically a necked up, scaled up 30 odd 6. Real scaled up 30 odd 6. We also have some ball ammo. It's just regular ball, it's no fun. Uh, you can get Ralphus rounds, you can get all kinds of different rounds for this. Uh, one thing though, if you're a civilian and you own a M2HB and you're shooting it, you kind of cry because each round is like three, four bucks if you don't reload and that's 600 rounds a minute, that, that hurts, that stings a lot. Uh, that's mainly the reason why we don't have one at the shop. 
We just we can't afford to feed it. I mean, we can afford the gun. We can make the gun. It's no problem. But we're not going to feed the damn thing. We just, you know, we can take our money and better spend it on other projects, to be honest with you. But maybe one day we'll get rich and afford it. Now, check it out. Let me show you some stuff about this gun. All right, to take it apart, you lift up on the back plate. You notice I'm standing off to the side. There's a reason for that. It's not under a heavy load right now, but this thing right here. If for some reason your bolt is back and you take this back plate off, this thing could literally go through your chest. I mean, it's a damn bullet. It has got a really nice compression spring on it, actually two of them. And it'll, it'll hurt, man. It'll hurt a lot. Again, I'm not going to take the whole thing apart just because, well, I, I, I don't want to. It's heavy. <laughs> it's cool, but it's heavy. Uh, basically, you take this out, take your bolt out, uh, take your uh, oil buffer body, which has your oil buffer, your barrel extension, blah, blah, blah. Of course, before you do that, you want to go ahead and take the barrel out, because on the M2HB, the barrel doesn't come out through the rear. On the XM218, the barrel does come out through the rear. Makes it a lot easier. Makes it a little easier to headspace and time as well, which we're going to go over that right quick. I'm going to put this back on. And you will notice it looks kind of like an upscaled 1919. It almost is. There's a lot of similarities, but there's a lot of differences too. Uh, one of the main differences is just the way it fires. On the 1919, you have a cool little trigger. On this, you have butterflies. And charge it up, squeeze trigger, pat. You know, it goes as long as you can keep it squeezed down. Uh, on the 50 cal, you can change the retracting slide assembly, which is this right here from the right or to the left side. You can change the feed from the right or the left side, uh, depending on what your mission or dictates, where you're mounting it, stuff like that. Uh, that's a pretty cool thing. You can also, of course, change your feed guide up here, and you know, your feed paws and stuff up in the top cover. Really a neat thing. Now you notice uh, on this mount, there is a T and E. I don't have the back of it mounted to the T and E right now. But uh, T and E stands for Traverse and Elevation. Basically, you can fine-tune your gun. That's cool. That's neat. Myself, I prefer it off the T and E because, well, I'm that kind of guy. I like to just kind of swing it around and shoot what I need to do. That's what I'm used to in the helicopters. All right, now back to headspace and timing. Charge it. Take your heads or your timing gauges. That's these two right here. You got a thin one. You got a thick one. Go ahead and pop your thick one in there. Doesn't fire. I think the TO says to charge it again. You can if you want. I recommend it. You don't have to. Charge it again. Try your small one. Lock it in there. And it fires. That's how it should be. If your gun fires on the big one, take your back plate off again, moving to the side. And there's your little timing knob down there in the, in the ass end of it. Depending on how your gun is out of spec, timing-wise, you turn it up or down. That sets your trigger bar, trigger bar extension, I think, which actually hits your trigger bar in the breech bolt. All right, so we charge it again. I'm going to check the headspace, in, or the headspace on it. We already checked the timing. Uh, it tells you to bring it back a certain distance in the TO. I don't remember what the distance is, but what I've always done, and it's always worked, is use the bigger section of my timing gauge popped it in there and that gives me a good system and I don't have to hold it open or anything like that. So I try my no-go, doesn't go, try my go, it goes. So our head spacing is good. And it's good because I said it the other day. If it wouldn't be good, you bring it back about, eh, about half inch, give or take. And you can actually have another guy turn the barrel for you while you do this. Or if you're really good, you can hold it and turn it by yourself, but it's a pain in the ass. Or you can just take a screwdriver and go pop, 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 because they have little uh, indentations in here. Now, we'll kind of mess up your indentations over time, and you could have some slippage, but it's a lot easier, and if you're doing it on the government's dime, who cares? So that's pretty much the 50 cal. Uh, let's see if there's something else cool about it. Uh, everything's cool about it. I mean, there's really nothing wrong with this gun. It's a really, really neat gun. Uh... Oh, here's a piece of wood. Don't see that on, you know, modern weapons too much anymore. But yeah, piece of wood. It's kind of nice. It's because it's made of wood. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. has a relatively quick change barrel. Right, 
I say relatively because you back it up a little bit, you grab that little handle, and as long as your little thing is in the slot on the barrel, you can turn it around, spin it around. Now, that's great, but you got to get up in front of your gun to do that. That's, that's not a good thing. Uh, there is a new one, the Gal 21, which I, I think it's a Gal 21, made by FN, which has a unique weapons ch we or barrel change system. I haven't personally used it. From what I hear, it's really quick, really cool. Uh, and then, you know, that's a step in the right direction, of course. Here's a neat thing, though. You always hear about cook-offs and stuff like that. Uh, you can get cook-offs with this relatively quickly. This gun heats up quick. I mean, real quick. So, and it's always a closed bolt. It's a closed bolt gun. So if you're firing, that, 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 that. And there is an actual uh, equation for this. How many you can fire, how long you have to wait, blah, 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 blah. But you're in combat. Nobody gives a shit about that. So what it is, is you're firing, that, 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 that. Let's say you fire off uh, 100 rounds. Your breech is hot. This section up here, your trunnion, everything up here is hot. And if you still have ammo, you have a round sitting in all that hotness. And it doesn't take long for that round to cook off. Basically, it just goes off from the heat. I've had that happen a lot. As long as your gun is trained on target like it should be, it's not a big deal. As long as you're ready for it, it's cool. You can actually let it cool without a, without a uh, cook off just by you know back and hold. It sucks because this is not easy to hold. So I don't recommend doing that. Also, if for some reason the round should go off, it's bottom eject, and there's nothing down here to stop pieces of brass, whatever, from hitting you on the legs. A lot of people will shoot this thing like this. That's stupid. That is stupid. Because if something happens, it's going to blow out the bottom, blow out the top, and what's down here in the bottom? Your legs. It can screw you up. This is a weapon you got to respect. This is no ordinary gun. This is not like a 9mm, you have an out of battery, ooh, big deal. Or even an 8mm, out of battery, yeah, it sucks, you get peppered, but it's no big deal. This, this can hurt you, this can wound you. This is a big gun, BMG, big machine gun. Uh, so that's about it. And today, we're lucky enough, since we fixed it, we have to go test fire. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I'm, I'm not looking forward to it at all, can you tell? So, I'm going to go ahead and pack up. Me and Ryan are going to pack up all the ammo, pack up the gun. Uh, we're going to go out, test fire this beast, and uh, hopefully you all enjoy seeing it, get a new respect for this gun. There's lots of videos out there. I'm going to try and get a little, uh, little in-depth on loading and stuff, maybe at the range. See you there. Hey kids, got a caveat for you. I was so excited to go out and shoot that I kind of forgot to fill you all in on how to load it. I really meant to, but I hadn't shot a 50 in a while and I was pretty stoked about it and I just wanted to get out there and shoot. The second thing is, we didn't have very much ammo to test fire with. We didn't want to waste a whole bunch of API ammo shooting a dark clod. You know, that's basically what we were doing to backstop. So we just shot some ball ammo. It worked out well, it worked fine. And we know it would work fine with the API, but the API is like, you know, seven, eight bucks around. We just don't have the budget to waste on a bunch of ammo like that. So I apologize, but I hope you all enjoy it. That seems like it'll work. Going hot! 